Hey guys, um, this is the video for hopefully what we'll get done later on the second part of this week. This is um, going to be for January 19th to 22nd. Yeah, 19th to 22nd. Um, this is the second part. We're going to be working on activity 2.1.3 called Putting It Together. And again, my phone wants to tell me it is 6.30. Thank you, phone. I appreciate you for telling me that. I will have to get back with you momentarily. All right. Alrighty, what was I talking about? So putting it together, um, this is one of those assignments that I've done before when I was taking the course. So the way we did it, we used Fusion. And the way it's written, the assignment is written, I think is for Fusion. So I may have to go in sometime before Thursday and rewrite this for Onshape uh, so I can get you an idea of what to do. Basically what you're gonna do, and some of you guys have started playing around with assemblies already, and that's cool, that's great. A lot of you guys, the people in person who you know got stuff done before other people and started messing in the assemblies, you guys got a handle on this already, kind of. Um, but in this one, we're talking about like degrees of freedom, what kind of joints there are, there's a little presentation to watch about degrees of freedom. Uh, degrees of freedom, basically it's like, if I pick something up in the real world, I can, move it in a lot of different ways. I can like translate it up and down, I can translate it forward and backward, I can translate it left and right, and I can also rotate it around an axis pointing like this direction. I can rotate around an axis pointing this direction, it's hard to tell it's a pencil, and I can rotate around an axis pointing this direction. So there's those degrees of freedom. Um, and you can have things that are like stuck in a certain way together because they're either joined together, glued together. A glue will usually keep things from moving apart from each other at all. They'll be stuck together. They're fixed together. They're fastened completely by the adhesive. Um, an example might be, let me find something with glue. There's a lot of things with glue, but I have a lot of hoop junk I don't want to put on. It's getting up. Here's something. Um, this actually has some cool features in general. There's like a sticker here that's stuck on to the, it's like a back scratcher thing that was in the Walmart, like um, stocking stuff was been before Christmas. So that's stuck. That sticker has no degrees of freedom. I can't pull it off and move it independently of the rest of the item. It's stuck. So that's uh, that's got no degrees of freedom. But for example, all these tubes here, this is a telescoping thing. I can slide them. I still have this degree of freedom. These guys all move independently in and out a certain amount. I think they also twist. Yeah, they do. Like I can twist the handle and the little rake that you scratch it back with remains in the same place. So it's got a degree of freedom where you can telescope in and out and twist around that axis. But like if I turn it this way, all the pieces are stuck together. If I want to move it up and down like this, all the pieces are still stuck together. They can only move that way and this twisting apart from each other, okay? Um, and so that's kind of actually what we're doing here. We have a selfie stick assembly, and I can show you what I did in Fusion and what it looks like. Here is, oh geez, my, uh, I'm used to the controls in Onshape, so forgive me if this takes a bit of effort, but you'll have three parts. You'll have this, uh, this guy right here, oh gee. It's been, it's been since the summer that I did anything with this. Can I drag this piece? Uh, yeah, this piece telescopes in and out like that. And that's kind of true of anything you have. Let me just have my phone. Yes, I do have my phone holder. If you have something that's meant to hold a phone, you'll have some part that telescopes like that because people's phones are slightly different sizes. Unless you have something that's specific to the brand of your phone, like your case, or if you have like a specific Apple brand, holder or you know, a branded holder that's meant for just that phone type. It's meant just to go with the Galaxy S9 Plus, for example, my, my Galaxy X9, S9 Plus that I have. That's going to be exact, but like this guy, this is sold by a third party. They want to be able to fit a bunch of different kinds of phones, even some small tablets, maybe. Well, maybe a tiny tablet. So they're going to want to have it change size like that. So that guy has this degree of frame between these two pieces. I believe it also rotates. This guy also rotates. Let's see. There's a rotational part right there. You can sort of see it. Let me look from the right side. This part here can rotate. I don't know how I, how to do it. Let me see if I can get it to work. I've been using Onshape right here. We go quite some time. 
that like oh, the stick is what rotates for some reason it's holding the uh the main part the holder still and the stick is what's being able to rotate and it can go from there to there it has a 90 degree um degree freedom it does not go oops i keep trying to use the right click drag to spin things around and that's not how it works there we go uh, i believe this rod also telescopes this cake scope there we go I think the rod also, yeah, you can telescope it. So if it was a selfie stick, you'd be able to, you know, make it go out a little ways and hold it and make sure that the angle for your phone was up just right. You can take a selfie and, and that's that. So all these pieces came separately. Um, there was this part of the telescoping part. There was also the inner part there. There was two part. There were two parts here that you put together so they bend. And I think this part here was also separate from this part. Um, and then also, I believe they had like a fastener that you put in here that you had to pick out from a catalog. So I'm going to look at the parts today and I'm going to see what there are and uh, how to maybe put that into arm shape. Um, I've downloaded them again to this computer if I can find my downloads. Yeah, I'll probably have to re-report this whole lecture when I have my, uh, my Fusion. Let's see, that's Fusion 360. This is inventor parts. Like, what are... What are these? Yeah, let's open this and see what they are. IPT, ooh, I don't know if I can open IPT in an arm shape. I know I can open up, if I save and export these parts all as, um, put holder tops and bottoms, stick top and bottom, adapter, shoe, yeah. I gotta go through and find all the parts to make sure I know which ones there are. So I need to go through this and double check it and maybe even walk through and or a um, re-record a video with or, or even like type out the instructions again for for on shape. So what they're giving you, there's some joint types, some more videos to watch. These are the parts they've given you. They've given you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's seven parts put together. And this thumb screw thing. Which isn't up here. So that's eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, oh, maybe this part came as one. Okay, that's eight pieces. Um, this is like an exploded view. It's called an exploded view, by the way. What this is saying is it's showing you that there's this line, of this axis that runs through all these things. They all go together, and this thumb screw is going to go in right about here once all these pieces come up to this level. And this guy here and this guy here both go on here as well, uh, without having to explode it completely in that line. Otherwise, those the handles will be way the heck down that way. All right. Yeah, I'm going to re-record this one, but here's a, just a general idea of what you're looking at. <laughs> Look at this, McCast. The Master Car Supply Company catalog part number, and then you can add that to your assembly file. <sighs> that's so cool. Yeah. Um, and that's something that you get when you actually work with a company and you're trying to put stuff together and you're like, I need this other company's precise brand of thumbscrew. I've got the catalog here. I could pull their STL or whatever cut file it is and put it right in my assembly. And look, that's the piece you use. And I can cite that on my paperwork and my, my assembly drawings and everything. And yeah. So yeah, we're, we're going to do together this uh, selfie stick thing. I'm going to have to make sure every single part is available in on shape or i'm going to have to load fusion onto all the computers which i can do it's just going to be a minute and i only have a dozen computers that sort of function right now yep anyways you can scroll through this it's going to be a couple days before we hit it and hopefully i'll have a better video uploaded for you with more information about the on shape process um and the cool thing about on shape is that they have a lot of the same sorts of things to do like let me see recently open what's the most recent one open this turn right here if i go and click assembly i'm not going to worry about assembly i only have one part i'm not going to put two things together i just have a one thing um up here you can insert the parts you're going to use you can insert a mate connector um mate is another word for just putting two things together and so to have a mate connector it's like i have a location that i specify on that part that I'm going to use to reference when I connect another part to that first part. So I'll have two connectors and I'll put them together. And it puts them together automatically. If I put in this, let's say I just put in this part right here. Yeah, that's great. That's perfect. 
if I go to make a fasten of some sort, if I put my mouse over, you'll see these little things pop up. It looks kind of like a Pac-Man with a red, a blue, and a green line coming off of it. That's like a new little origin point. Um, it's telling you what direction everything is. The blue, green, and, and red are going to be your X, Y, and Z. Most likely they actually match the um, X is pos positive X is the red line, positive blue is the Z line, positive green is your Y line. So when I mouse over right here, you can see, let's see if I come at it from a different, a different angle. Not like that. I don't know, I have, to, I, have to show, I have to play around with it some more, but you'll see sometimes it changes like the orientation of those three lines. Um, but it'll automatically pick points, it'll automatically click to centers, it'll automatically click on edges in the center, edges on the corners, it'll click the center of a circular, circular feature. Um, and you can actually find that there's a lot of mate connectors it assumes already kind of exist in this. So if I were trying to attach something to go through the center of this hole, I could click right here where the center of the hole is, and, uh, and then I have to click something else, but I don't have anything else. So. So yeah, you can do the same sorts of things as you can in Fusion. It's just slightly different, and I'm going to have to do a bit of explanation on that if you haven't already started with the subways. Alrighty, it's a long video. Uh, I'm going to redo it for you guys when I have more information from Onshape. And uh, yeah, have a great one. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day if you're watching this on Monday. Um, and I'll talk to you all soon.